Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RegameTed.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD, specifically a new chipset from the company, the 400 Pro Montre chipset, which, as you can imagine, is built for the Ryzen range of processors. We'll get to that in a moment, and then we'll finish the video off with an Intel 1TB BGA SSD. But, as I mentioned, we'll start at things out with the Pro Montre 400 chipset, once again from AMD. Now, this information has come to us through PCI SIG. If you're unfamiliar with PCI SIG, they are essentially responsible for maintaining the standards of the PCI format. In other words, they ensure compatibility and intraoperability between different PCI devices. And that, of course, also includes PCIe. Next year is going to likely be a very busy year for AMD, as we all know. One of the reasons behind that is currently Ryzen processors, this includes Threadripper or even the Ryzen 3, whatever, is all built around the 14nm LPP process. And it will be switching to a somewhat updated process, which is the Global Foundry's 12nm LP process. Now, just so we're clear here, this is not a Zen 2 specifically. Instead, it's just going to be Zen 1, but with better uh, higher clocks, better power efficiency, and perhaps a few uh, tweaks here and there. Like we might be seeing the mainstream Ryzen processors up their cache game to perhaps more the tighter timings of the Threadripper range of processors, that type of thing. So what we'll be looking at is uh, Zen Plus, or some are going to be referring to it for now anyway as Ryzen 2000 series, and you might also refer to it as Pinnacle Ridge. From the rumours, just so we're all clear, Zen 2 is going to be utilised for Ryzen 3000 series, and there will likely be a whole host of Zen architecture changes, as from the rumours, once again, we'll be seeing a 7nm fabrication process. And this also matches announcements from AMD themselves. Okay, so now that we're all up to speed, what's happening? Well, the Pro Montre platform has been the codename for the Summit Ridge 300 series chipsets. And it was listed first on PCI SIG in January 2016, so almost two years ago. And now the internets are ablaze because the 400 series chipsets have also emerged. So if we start things out, first of all, with the Pro Montre um, of uh, January 25th, uh, 2016, excuse me, it will, of course, be identified as having the root complex of PCIe 2.0 at 5GT slash S, whereas the uh, 400 series of Pro Montre motherboards will feature PCIe 3.0 at 8GT slash S. For those unfamiliar with what the root complex is, the best way to describe it is it is the interface which connects the processor, by the way, to and the memory subsystem to the PCIe devices themselves, which obviously can be comprised of multiple devices. So in effect, what we're getting here is a massive improvement in bandwidth, but it also confirms a few other things concerning the 400 series. Now, AMD have promised to continue their support for the AM4 platform until 2020 but that is with a small caveat which most people forget including me sometimes to be fair and that is that if standards such as PCIe 4.0 or DDR5 become commonplace by that time they will need to put out a different uh, socket or whatever and there is a couple of reasons behind that the primary one is that well basically the pin count they would need to add or you know change the pin layout and it would likely mean that um, the uh, current processors would be incompatible if they were to switch to, say, DDR5 or PCIe4. This confirms, however, that the 400 series, shock and horror, is definitely going to still be backwardly compatible. So in short, if you were to buy a 400 series motherboard, right, you know, right the second they launched, and you were to have, let's say, your Ryzen 7 processor, and you were to slot that into your motherboard, you should have absolutely no issues at all getting it to work. I suspect there might be other small improvements to the motherboards themselves as well. Who knows, but it could possibly be better power management, 
maybe a few BIOS tweaks, that type of thing. In other words, it's also going to act as perhaps an incentive for you to upgrade your motherboard if you are considering buying the 2000 series processors. Switching gears from AMD to Intel, and we have an announcement of sorts anyway, from Intel concerning a one terabyte BGA SSD. And it's actually pretty interesting because Intel have released this image and it possibly tells up to some leaked roadmaps which appeared earlier this year. Now, don't forget other companies already have um, a multi-chip package SSD and those would be Toshiba and Samsung. And this image that Intel have released shows someone holding a I'm going to read this verbatim. Uh, first generation 1 terabyte Intel 3D NAND SSD, solid state drive from 2016, and a second generation 1 terabyte 3D NAND drive from 2017 at the right, what a terabyte of 3D NAND from Intel will look like the next year. Now, before everyone starts going, yeah, oh my god, look how small it is, there are a couple of things to take into consideration. First of all, the text itself is rather vague, and the second thing is the it's pretty obvious just from looking at the package itself that it's not really an SSD. Instead, the key words here are what a terabyte of 3D NAND, 3D NAND will look like from Intel next year, not what a one terabyte SSD will look like from Intel next year. So instead more consider this to be the actual BGA uh, package itself. Now that in of course, uh, sorry, by itself can of course be mounted into a couple of different scenarios. The first is the M2 PCB, which would naturally uh, then, you know, have a few other small components, would then turn it into an SSD, or the other option is it could be mounted directly onto a motherboard, and that would be absolutely fantastic for small, um, low-power devices, for example, Chromebooks or low-power laptops. Unfortunately, other details are still a bit sketchy at the moment. We can certainly make some guesses, but ultimately, CES 2018 is going to be happening in about two weeks. Obviously, it's very early January. If you're watching this video at another time of the year, it's currently very late in 2017. It's the 23rd of uh, December as I'm recording this. So evidently, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll have a lot more information. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.